Hi, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of joyofbaking.com. Today we're going to make cowboy cookies. This is really an oatmeal cookie with lots of extras, things like uh, chocolate chips, raisins, coconut, and chopped nuts. So the first thing we need to do is preheat our oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 180 degrees uh, Celsius. And then you will need um, two baking sheets and you can line them with a piece of parchment paper like I have done here, or you could just lightly butter or even just um, spray them with one of those non-stick uh, cooking sprays. And then if you uh, have an electric stand mixer like I have here, use a paddle attachment, or you could just use a hand mixer for this. The first thing um, we need is one cup, that's 226 grams of butter. You can use salted or unsalted and have it at room temperature. And then what I'm going to do is just beat the butter, you know, for a minute or two, just to soften it and make it um, creamy smooth. Okay, and then just scrape down uh, the sides and bottom of your bowl as much as you need to as you're making the batter, because you want to make sure everything's all mixed together. So next, we're using both um, white and brown sugar. Um, you will need two thirds of a cup, that's 140 grams of uh, brown sugar. You can use the light brown sugar or the dark, either one. I'm using the light today. And a half a cup of uh, granulated white sugar, it's 100 grams. And then we're just going to beat, these, uh, the, beat this together just until it's nice and creamy and smooth. That will take anywhere from like two to three minutes. Okay, so this is what you're looking for. Just nice and creamy and smooth and all mixed together. Again, scrape down the sides and the uh, bottom of your bowl. So next we're going to add uh, one and a half teaspoons of vanilla extract and try to use the pure, it's um, better flavor than the artificial. And we're going to have, use two large eggs, have those at room temperature, and I'm going to add them one at a time. Beat one in and then beat the uh, second one in. Now your batter may look a little curdled from those eggs, but don't worry about that because as soon as we add the flour, that will smooth everything out. Okay, so now for our dry ingredients. In a separate bowl, I have two cups, that's 260 grams of all-purpose flour. You may know that is plain flour. And to that, I'm going to add one and a, uh, one and a quarter teaspoons of baking soda and then a half a teaspoon of salt. Now, if you use salted butter, you may want to cut back or just leave that salt out altogether. And then just whisk that together. With a, I'm just using a wire whisk. Now, um, some people like ground cinnamon, like a cinnamon flavor. You could add a half or even up to a teaspoon of ground cinnamon if you'd like that. And then I'm just going to add that to our batter. Now start this on um, slow speed because we don't want that flour coming up in our face. So I've, I've mixed the flour about halfway in as you can see. So now what I'm going to do, so I'm going to scrape this down a bit. 
I'm going to add our uh, oats. Now we're using rolled oats. I like to use the old fashioned rolled oats because they're a little thicker um, texture. And that'll give us a more chewy cookie. I mean, if you only have in the uh, instant, you could use that. But uh, I'm using two cups, which is 480 milliliters of the rolled oats. So just add that in. And we're just going to beat that. Okay, now I have them completely because now we're going to add all the other stuff. This cookie, besides being called a cowboy cookie, it is called a kitchen sink cookie, an everything cookie, or even a ranger cookie. So if you see it by those names, you know it's essentially a cowboy cookie. Now, for I'm going to add, because I haven't totally mixed that all together, so I'm going to add all of our other things that we're going to. Now, um, I'm adding a half a cup, which is 120 milliliters of chocolate chips, raisins, and chopped nuts. Now, um, for the chocolate chips, you could use a dark, you could use like the bittersweet, semi-sweet, you could use milk, you could use white chocolate chips. I mean, you could really, or a mixture. And then for the raisins, um, dark or the golden, you could use um, currants. If you didn't want to use raisins, you could use dried cranberries or dried cherries. I mean, you could really um, vary this. For the nuts, um, I'm using walnuts here today. You could use pecans, you could use uh, hazelnuts, you could use almonds. If you want to toast them, just put them in the oven for about 8-10 minutes, just until they're night. You can start to smell the nuts and a little golden and then let them cool and then chop them. And then I'm adding a quarter of a cup, 60 milliliters of dried coconut. You could use um, either the flaked or the shredded. Now, some people don't like uh, coconut. You could leave that out. And then just maybe add a little more chocolate chips. You can kind of really vary and have fun with um, those ingredients. So now we got quite a big batter here. So I'm going to mix all this in. You could do this by hand. If you're doing it with a hand mixer, you might find it easier just to stir all these in by hand. It's our batter. Now, if you find your batter really soft, you could pop this into the fridge just to firm it up, you know, half hour, an hour. Actually, you could leave this in the, uh, you could chill this for a couple days. Like if you didn't want to bake all the cookies at once, just put it in the fridge and then tomorrow you could make some. Have them fresh out of the oven. Because this makes a fairly big batch. So if you want, you could like just um, half the batch instead of making the full. Because I know this is a lot of cookies. Although if you have kids in the house, you'll want a lot. So now we're going to um, form our cookies. Now I'm going to make these um, fairly big. I'm going to use a quarter cup, which is a 60 milliliter ice cream scoop. You could just use, you know, the quarter cup, 60 milliliter um, measuring cup here, for, or just two spoons. But the, the important thing is try to make them all the same size. That's why it's good to either use an ice cream scoop or your measuring cup. And since these are so um, large, I'm only going to put six at a time because they do spread as you if you've ever made like oatmeal cookies you, they will spread and if your batter particularly if your batter is soft they'll even spread even more so that's why if you're you might want to pop it into the fridge if it's soft first Okay. 
Now, if you didn't want to make them this big, if you just want to make them small, like normal size, you could do that. Um, just keep in mind that, of course, your baking time is going to be shorter. Now, we want to flatten these because down. So you can just um, put a little water on your hands, get a little damp, and then just press them down. Let's flatten those tops. So, um, of course, everybody's oven is a little different, but for this size, I would say somewhere between 14 and 16 minutes. You might want to rotate the pan halfway through baking. And so what you're looking for is the outside of the cookies uh, will be golden brown, but the centers will still be um, soft because you don't, if you bake them more than that, then you'll find they're not as soft and chewy. Of course, if you want them a little uh, more crunchy, then bake them a little longer. Okay, so our cowboy cookies are now done. As you can see, the outside is nice and golden brown, and yet the inside is still quite soft, as you can see. Now, this is uh, what you want them to look like if you want like a soft and chewy cowboy cookie. If you prefer them a little more crisp, just bake them a minute or two longer. So just let them sit um, in the, on the pan for about five, 10 minutes, because they're really soft and fragile and then just use a uh, spatula to transfer them to uh, a wire rack to finish cooling. So until next time, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of joyofbaking.com.